Simon, a whirlwind couple of days for you. Just explain what's happened. Yeah, so I'd, I've been doing my rehab over the, um, the past few weeks um, since the boys' last game at Everton. I'd been in the following, following days and working hard to get, get my fitness back, come back after the small operation I'd had on my knee. Um, and then myself and, and Jace had a conversation uh, on Friday in the office and, and the club felt moving forward that there wasn't um, an opportunity to renew my contract, uh, my playing contract. And whilst I was obviously disappointed, I, I respected the decision. I know which way the club is moving. Um, I know it wants to move forward again and get back to the top as soon as possible. Um, and like I said, of course I was disappointed. I'd, I'd love to carry on my, my playing years at, at this club, the club that I love. But it was a decision I had to respect. Um, and here we are now, yeah, a few days later. Not possibly the end of the road? No, I, I hope not. Um, not playing wise, I, I want to get back to full fitness, which is hopefully a few weeks away. Um, see what level I'm at then, see what opportunities there are. Obviously, that, that plays a big part. I think in the current climate, it's, it's going to be hard for, for a lot of players to find new football clubs, regardless of their, their age or coming off the back of an injury. Um, so I think it'll be tough for me. It might be a, a waiting game, certainly. Uh, the transfer window won't close till October. Um, and then it will come down to if I actually want to wait that long or I want to explore other opportunities. Um, so we'll see. Are there any other opportunity possibly at AFC Bournemouth? Yeah, th th there's been some potential talks um, behind the scenes. I mean, I'd love to stay at the football club without a doubt, whether that's now or, or in a year's time after, after continue playing. Um, but the club know that. I know that. I, I think I could offer a lot to the football club, having just come out of the game, having just come out of the, the dressing room with, with all those players. Um, and I feel the club needs that, that experience and that, that, um, that know-how of, of, of being in the dressing room, especially coming out of the game so quickly. So I hope I can offer that if, if that is a role that, that is talked about, uh, but we will see over the next couple of weeks. You said that you'd, uh, you'd love to stay at the club. Just take yourself back to November 2011 when you sat on the bench and watched a 6-0 defeat by Brentford in the uh, Football League trophy. Did you uh, love the club then? Uh, I won't say I loved it now. I was, I was looking around thinking what have I got myself into. Uh, but it's funny really because it, it was a step down for me at the time. I, I came from Charlton. Um, on a stroke of luck really and the story goes that it was Bournemouth or Carlisle for me on loan and as soon as I mentioned Carlisle to Mrs she broke down in tears we were out at dinner and that's a true story she was crying saying we can't go to Carlisle so then I rang Bradders and said yeah I'm on my way down uh, suits me uh, and I have to thank Lee Bradbury for that I always do um, he signed me I think Nathan Byrne got injured at the time so I was, I was quite fortunate came down played a few games on loan sat on the bench for that first cup game and I loved it straight away. I loved the area. I loved the group of the lads that were already there. Some of the boys that are still there now and, and ex-players as well. And I felt a real sense of like a family, family style atmosphere, something I'd never experienced before at a football club. And, and straight away I knew that this is a place I wanted to be for years to come. I think the team were in the bottom half of League One when you came down and you debuted in the FA Cup against Gillingham and went on to lose that replay. Things weren't really all going in the club's favour in those days. No, they weren't. It was certainly um, turbulent times. You know, obviously Lee Bradbury came out of the job and, and Paul Groves came in. And I would actually say he implemented a, a style of football that, that suited us, the squad that we had, and, and then Eddie inherited. Um, we started to pass the ball a lot more. Um, we had a good squad at the time. We, you know, the money was coming into the football club slowly but surely. There was obviously Max Denham um, coming in behind the scenes. And it was looking a little bit more stable. It was looking comfortable. Um, and then for me, the icing on the cake was when Eddie walked back through the door. You could just tell instantly it was almost overnight. Well, it was his first day, in, I always remember his first day when we had a walk down to the beach and he, he spoke to everybody individually. Had a real impact on every single player that day. Um, and you could just tell in training, the intensity just, just went up straight away. Went on a great run of games and, and that was when the belief started coming in that we could do something special. You touched on it there, but... Um played for three different managers in the space of 11 months. That must be quite unsettling for a player. Yeah, it wasn't ideal. I remember Fletch, uh, he won't like me for saying this, but I think the second day I was there, he stepped down as assistant to carry on playing and got really emotional about it. And I'd just been on the bench for that 6-0 defeat to Brentford and I just I couldn't get my head around what was happening. Um, so it was certainly an exciting few weeks, to, to say the least. But like I said, over the coming months, there was definitely more stability coming into it. and. The manager coming back was 
the real high point, without a doubt. Um, all the players knew that. Like I said, he, he'll be the first to admit he inherited a really good squad. Uh, a lot of ability in there. We spent a bit of money on some on some important players at the time. Myself, Cookie and Chaz all, all joined at a similar time. And then the manager added real quality over the, over the coming years and we just went from strength to strength. And you obviously caught his eye in the first game he took charge of. You scored a thunderous drive which whistled past the Tranmere goalkeeper. Yeah, um, one of not many that I've scored over the past few years. And that'll probably be one of my biggest regrets that I never scored in the Premier League. My, my son always goes on about it. Can I watch your goals back? And some of them are so blurry, it was that long ago. A couple in the Championship, uh, Wigan and Bolton, I think. The Tranmere one, which you know, is probably one of my favourites, actually. Um, but yeah, no Premier League goal to my name, which is, is a slight disappointment, but doesn't tarnish anything that I've done at the football club, certainly. Um, I'd love to have scored more goals, but for some reason, I, I just enjoyed getting forward and making assists, really. That was always in the forefront of my mind, to bomb on and try and help the team out in that way. Promotion, obviously, at the end of the 2012-2013 uh, season, you got what you'd, uh, what you'd wanted. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, and like I said, when the manager walked back through the door, we really had a sense of belief. We had some really good players who, who I, I thought straight away could play higher instantly. Uh, and I think the manager believed that as well. And went on a great run of form. Uh, one of a lot of games changed our style, our philo philosophy almost instantly. And, and it suited the group of players down to the ground. And even when we were prom promoted out of League One, we just knew that we'd be we'd be good in the championship. We probably lacked a little bit of physicality that, that showed in the first few games. I think Watford and Huddersfield we were beat fairly heavily, so we knew we had to add that to to our side of the game. But we did that, um, and we we competed really well in our first season. But we always knew there was there was more to come. Just in those first two seasons in the championship, you only missed four league games in total as well. That was a, a proud attendance record, if you like. Yeah, certainly, and I started to change what I was doing off the field as well. Um, I was certainly living better. I was eating the right foods. I'd had my daughter when we, when we first moved down. She's nine now and that, that gives you that extra sense of responsibility, certainly. I think the lads who have got children will, will admit that. Gives you a more, a more responsible role in and around the training ground, on the pitch as well, because you feel like you want to make your family proud, make your children proud. And, and that certainly was in, in my mind to do that. And I thought, what can I do to get the best out of my game? to achieve the most out of my career at Bournemouth. And that was certainly to change things off the field, um, sleep better. Uh, I know the lads, a lot of the lads do it now, sleeping in a separate room the night before a game, just, just to ensure that you're, 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 that you're at your best um, and eat the right foods. That was massive for me. Uh, changed my diet. The club are great with that now over the past few years. Um, it's been excellent. That's been in place. And I really felt the benefits from that and, and staying injury free obviously that, that plays a big part but I think everything I'd, I'd spoke about goes hand in hand with that. The players very quickly found their feet in the championship in that first season and then in the second season obviously promotion to the Premier League but it wasn't all plain sailing in that season. I think you were 15th in September before Arthur Boric arrived. Yeah, um, it was tough like I said we, we were still getting to grips with the physicality of it. Um, and we probably needed that experience. Uh, a lot of the players we had hadn't played a load of games in the Championship. Um, and Artur Boric coming in was just, he just settled down everyone. You, you know the character he is. Um, he's so relaxed, he's very laid back. And he was exactly what we needed at the time. Uh, played a huge part in coming in and just really making everybody more relaxed, um, concentrated more. I know that, that sounds like the opposite, but when we knew we had Artur Boric be behind us, we didn't want to let him down. Um, because he'd let you know about it if, if you made a mistake, for sure. Uh, and he did really well for us. He was one of the pivotal reasons we got promoted. So, yeah, another key signing for us. And a proud, ever-present record in the club's first season in the Premier League as well. Yeah, well, again, it, I think it goes with how I was trying to change my lifestyle off, off the field. I'd had the confidence from being promoted out of the Championship. I knew I was doing the right things off the pitch. And I just continued that. I just wanted to stay injury-free. I wanted to play as many games as I could. I was chomping at the bit every single weekend to get out there and prove myself. Um, and I, I loved every minute of it. I felt fit, I felt strong. Um, even coming up against some of the, the best players in the world in, in that season in the Premier League, you know, the Manchester City's away and Eden Hazard, I remember having some really tough battles with him playing fullback. But I, I wanted to test myself at that point. I felt like I was at a good level um, to be playing at and I loved every single minute of that first season. And the departure of one of your teammates, Tommy Elphick, resulted in you getting the captain's armband. That must have been a proud moment for you as well. 
Yeah, it was it was a um, it was a proud moment, but also sad because me and Tommy got on really well. So did the whole squad. But he knew that he wasn't playing as many games as he would have liked to. He knew he had to go and play some games. Uh, Villa was a great move for him at the time. And I'd had the armband a couple of times in the Championship uh, in his absence and then in the Premier League when he, when he wasn't playing as well. So I had an inkling that I might have got, got it on a permanent basis. I felt like I'd, I'd done enough to get it, but the manager kept me waiting for a few days in pre-season. Um, and the lads were, were kind of questioning it, saying, well, I'm not sure if you're going to get it now. You know, you haven't been told anything. So I was, I was a little bit nervous and then he called me into his office and, and told me that he wanted me to have it on a, on a full-time basis and I was absolutely delighted. It was certainly one of the highlights of my career to be to be named club captain, um, something that I took really seriously. Um, I felt I'd worked hard for it over the, the past few years, like I spoke about, and yeah, it was it was um, something that made me very very proud, and I loved every minute of that. Tommy says that the team that won the championship, he thinks it was the best championship team of all time. Is that something that you would concur with? <sighs> that's a big statement from Tom, but that's Tommy for you because he, he backed everything that he, that he believed in. Uh, he was great like that. Uh, he was a real motivator in the change room. And I'd say we had quite contrasting styles really as captains. I learned loads off him, but I wasn't going to try and be somebody I wasn't. Um, so I wasn't going to be as vocal as, as him in the change room, but I wanted to try and lead by example on the pitch with my performances and off the pitch, try and be a role model for a lot of the younger players. And I felt I did that. Uh, and there's no doubt about that season in the championship. We, we were something special without a doubt. The only team that I can see that has been close to that or the squad that have been close to that of recent years is probably Leeds this, this season. They've been phenomenal the last couple of seasons, but they got their rewards this season. Fulham obviously have been great, playing a great brand of football, but it's funny, all, everyone I speak to, uh, friends and family and fans around the area always talk about that championship season, how excited it got them every single game. They, they love watching us play. They love the partnerships we had in the, in the team, the relationships, and that, that, that year was certainly one of the fondest memories of, of my career. And what about leading the club to their highest Premier League finish as well? Yeah, that, again, so many fond memories to talk of, so many positives. And I'm not really one for swapping shirts or, or getting things signed, that kind of thing. I, I, I probably wish I'd done it more, actually, and got a few more shirts signed of players I played against. But I've got two shirts up in the gym signed by all the lads of, of that season when we finished ninth because it was a special season. We ended really well. We had some great results. Um, and it just felt like this was as, not as far as we could come because the season after we felt we could go and play U European football, but I think we lost the first five games. So that kind of went out the window. So I knew that had been a special season um, and definitely one to remember. And again, really proud to have played a part in that. Not too many negatives that you spoke about, but there was that fateful day uh, against Tottenham Hotspur on Boxing Day where your footballing world came, came crashing down. Yeah, it, it did. I mean, uh, the ACL injury, the... the the one that all the all footballers fear, um, you know, many years ago it, it would have ended a lot of careers. Obviously, it still can because there can be complications coming back from that. You you get reoccurring injuries afterwards. You get other compensating injuries on on the other leg or in and around the knee or anything can happen after an ACL. That's for sure. Um, and I remember the day really clearly. Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd had a lot of games in the build-up, and I was playing fullback and and then right over back three at times and centre half, and I didn't feel as as energetic or as fit as, as I had done in, in previous games and I knew those games were taking their toll on me um, whether that was an age thing or, or not but the squad I think we had a few injuries at the time so I was, I was playing every single game the manager said he, he'd like to have rested me if he, if he could but it just wasn't possible uh, and the game before I think we might have played Liverpool at home um, and I'd bombed on an overlap and I was struggling to get back in and that wasn't like me and that's when I knew that I was might not have been feeling as fit as before and then we played Tottenham away after and I just remember Son doing a, a nice trick on me um, and my, my leg just gave way and, and instantly it was a pain that I'd never felt before, uh, a sharp stabbing pain that didn't go away and then the adrenaline must have kicked in, that's what the doc said and the pain was almost gone and I thought I might have got away with it but as soon as I, I got to the hospital which was an hour later that they diagnosed it, a, a rupture of the ACL and yeah it was a long road back from there. During that long road, it was nine months in total. Were there ever any dark moments when you thought, I'm not going to get back here? Yeah, yeah, there was. And I think any player who has that injury, especially the older they get, they'd probably be lying if they said they didn't because the first couple of months were an absolute nightmare. I couldn't even get out of bed without getting crutches or feeling lightheaded. I was using the game-ready ice machine six times a day, sleeping with it on, 
the swelling wasn't going down. I went out to Philadelphia with Lewis Cook. And I had more problems with the back of my knee. I couldn't straighten my leg out. And that was nine months into the rehab. So th there were times when I thought I wasn't going to get back. And then I just I made one focus, made one goal, um, my aim, and that was just to lead the lads out. And I, I just wanted that at the front of my mind, to be able to lead the lads out as captain one more time, uh, wherever it is, whoever it's against. And that was the closure that I wanted. And I'd never told anyone that before. Um, but that would have been Chelsea away when I came back and we won away from home 1-0 uh, with Gozo, Gozo's VAR goal that we had. Um, and after that game, I remember sitting at home with a beer and I just said to myself, if I don't achieve anything else, then I know I've come back from an ACL at 33 years old and, and still captain the lads in the Premier League. So that was a, a huge moment for me. Got two young kiddies and a, and a lovely wife. Surely, um, I should imagine, you had to lean on them a lot as well during those nine months. Yeah, I did. And they were, they were great. They were... The, they were the rock for me, really. My wife, um, she certainly found it hard because she knows that I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly strong character. I don't often show my feelings. Um, so every day I'd say, yeah, I'm fine. But inside, she knew that it was hurting me. The kids didn't understand what was going on, really. They, they were at school. Um, my little boy was asking me to be in the garden every single day and I, I couldn't get out there. I didn't even want to go out there at times. Um, so it was tough. It, it really was. Um, but like I said, the, the small light at the end of the tunnel was that that fact that I could try and get out there one more time, anything else would have been a bonus. Um, and then the, the, the worst part is that the other knee injury I had for the past few months was completely separate to the ACL. It was done in the Brighton game at home. I just chipped a bit of cartilage away from my kneecap and, and I just I couldn't get that back to normal until the operation recently. So that was a really frustrating time for me as well because I think everybody else would have thought that was related to the ACL injury, but it wasn't. It was a, a completely, completely new one. And you said you didn't feature after lockdown because of the second knee injury as well. What was that like watching the team? Um, empty stadiums, not the best start to lockdown, obviously picked up towards the end and then just, just failed to get over the line at the end. Probably the worst part of my career, if I'm honest, Neil. The, uh, it was worse than my ACL injury because I didn't actually know what was wrong with me. Um, the whole of lockdown, I felt great. I was cycling nearly every single day. Um, wasn't running or, or actually training as much as I probably should have, but I felt that the cycling would have been the best thing for my knee and, and just concentrating on gym work. And then I came back in the first session, back after lockdown, it just, it just flared up and just couldn't get it right again. I was losing fitness again, training once a week and then not being able to train again for the rest of the week. And it was, it was ridiculous, the, the situation I was in. So I demanded that I, I had to have the operation, I had to go and see the surgeon, get it cleared out just for peace of mind more than anything. Um, and then to sit and watch the lads in, in empty stadiums was just, it was a nightmare. It was horrible, really. And I think that affected us, definitely. I mean, we haven't got a, a massive stadium and, and we know that, but we certainly relied on the atmosphere. Um, and I think that, that made a big difference for us down at the bottom. We needed the fans more than ever. Um, and to not have them there was a huge blow. You've seen quite a lot of the club's medical staff in the, in the past couple of years. So, and I'm sure that you'd like to thank them for their efforts as well. Yeah, there's so many people I'd, I'd like to thank. Of course, the medical team, I've worked with all of them. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, really high quality physios as well that, that have had to put up with me and a few other lads that have been injured because we've had our fair share of injuries to be fair. Um, but there's a long, long list of thank yous, of course. Um, and I'll let them people know as well, definitely with phone calls and text messages, not just the medical team, players, other staff members for sure. Um, and of course the fans who have been so loyal over the years. Eddie Howe obviously stepped down at the end of the season and has been replaced by Jason Tindall. Just give us a word on both of those guys and how they've pl uh, played a key role in your career. Yeah, I mean, where do I start? Especially with um, Eddie, obviously. I think what's really interesting is that they're, they're quite contrasting characters and I think they've, they've said that recently as well. The manager is, is definitely a realist and he likes to think worst case scenario just to be prepared and, and Jace is always a positive guy and, and can see the positive in any situation. I think that's why... He'll be successful at the football club, certainly, with Stephen Purchase by his side. That'll be a great appointment, um, a really good coach and a good friend as well. Um, but to talk about Eddie, I could talk for, for hours about him, to be honest. Without a doubt, the best manager, the best coach I've ever played for. Um, the manager who made me believe I could play in the Premier League, because before, before he came back to the football club, I was trying to carve out a career in the League One and at best in the Championship until he spoke to me on the first day back down at the beach and, and said that he thought he was, I was one of the best fullbacks he'd seen play. Uh, and I don't think any manager had ever said that to me. And from then on, I, 
I thought I'd, I'd run through brick walls for him and I tried my hardest every day for him. Uh, worked hard. His style and his philosophy at the football club suited us down to, down to the ground and we worked very hard for him but he worked even harder for us trying to get the best out of us and he certainly did that. Jason's made it quite clear that he's going to be his own man but also he said that there's a lot he can take from Eddie into his managerial career. Well why wouldn't he? I mean the success that he's, he's had with Eddie um, and being able to learn all those years with him. Um, there's certainly coaching styles of, of his that stand out for me. He was, he was a good defensive coach, he worked on set plays really well um, and he feels like he's going to be the man for the job and I, and I can't see why not to be honest. In the, in the short turnaround we have and to bring in a, a new manager who doesn't necessarily know the history and the philosophy of the football club would be hard now, I think, with the championship season starting soon and then the amount of games we're going to have. I think it was the right option, without a doubt, to bring Jason in because he knows the squad so well. We need to hit the ground running. There's no doubt about that. We want to bounce back straight away. And I say we because I'm still talking like I'm there or, or maybe as a fan because that's what I am now, without a doubt. I want to get to as many games as possible and watch the boys and, and help in any way I can. And yeah, I think Jason's going to be the right man. 644 career appearances, more than 300 for Bournemouth. Give us your favourite Bournemouth performance. Oh, wow, that's a good question. There's loads to choose from, Neil, honestly. I mean, I'd love to say any of the Premier League ones. I think the first win away from home at Chelsea it was massive when we won 1-0 when Glenn Murray popped up. I got man of the match that night and that was a, a really big moment. That was when I, I, I genuinely believed that we were capable of staying in the Premier League and I, I thought myself that I could be a Premier League player for a, for a few years with the club. Um, there was the three assists against Leeds in the Championship that stands out on a personal level. Um, the Charlton game was massive for me, that was definitely up there when we got promoted to go back to a team that said that I wasn't good enough to play for them and then to go up as champions at Charlton away, that was one of my proudest moments as well. So it's tough. Um, I'll go with the Charlton one on the last day of the season. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for your time. And on behalf of everybody, supporters, staff, players as well, I'd like to thank you for your outstanding service to the club down the years. It's been an absolute pleasure to deal with you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you.